Hi, it's Paul. So we're going to take another look at Control I O, and we'll take a look at a different scene. Let's go to Scenes, and we're going to open the Trainer Panel. Okay, this is a just a panel with some lights and buttons, and there's one conveyor. Um, we've got a stack light. We've got different these. Uh, let me hit play for a second. These are all, as you can see, they're push buttons and they're also lights. So we can turn those lights on and we can push buttons. There's a little potentiometer. We can set our analog input. Uh, there's a voltmeter down here so we can have analog output. And just some basic things. Okay, I'm going to go to drivers and initially this is set up for using Alan Bradley Studio 5000 and notice here what I need to do when I'm using Alan Bradley PLC is I have to connect all my inputs and outputs from my factory IO to addresses that the Alan Bradley system can use and then in the Alan Bradley Studio 5000 I have to make matching tags to match up to those. So it's a little bit tedious once it's set up it's it's fine but it's a little tedious getting it set up. Now I'm going to change to control IO and it says it's starting and you notice all my tag information disappeared here in the center. That's because with control IO it's all done automatically. So I don't have to do any of that coordination. Now if I open up my tags in control I.O. Here's all my my conveyor, my e-stop. Here's my different lights and buttons. So it's all in there automatically. Um, so that's really slick. Let's take a look at what we've got going here in factory or in control I.O. I'm going to collapse that so that these are different categories. Sources those are just inputs that you can use right in control I.O. such as the bool, boolean input, that's just a button to send a hot signal to something and I'm going to delete that okay those are sources tags are what it sees in the factory I.O. scene those are things that we get inputs from and we send outputs to Memories, this is when I need to store a value somewhere in the PLC and then use it somewhere else. So, for example, I might need an integer. And notice I have an input and an output from this memory. So I could, I could set this guy to a value down here, I guess. And, well, I guess I can send a, an output to this guy and then use it somewhere else. As you can tell, I don't use that one very much. Um, okay, so those are memories. Function blocks, that's what we use a lot. We've got arithmetic. So that's add, divide, multiply, subtract. If I want to add two numbers together, I just use this add block. And I send two inputs and that gives an output. Sends my output somewhere else. Uh, counters, that's for counting up or counting down. Uh, extra, we don't use too much. We might use this assign guy once in a while. And it's kind of neat. I can send two different values. Say I send a 5 to this and a 10 to this. And if I send a hot signal to this guy, then it'll send the PT2. And if I don't send a hot signal, it'll send out the PT1. So sometimes that's kind of helpful. Also, once you get these function blocks on your screen, then if you click on it, at the bottom, it gives you a little description of what each one's doing. So it's kind of a quick built-in help. Uh, here's logical. We use that quite a bit. And 
So there's an N2 and an N4. So the N4, it's you have to have all these conditions true in order to get the output. Uh, there's the not, and that just changes your signal from hot to cold and cold to hot. Now let's see, the reset, set and reset, that's a very handy one. You send one signal and it sets the output and it stays as that output until you send a different signal to turn it off. So that's how we, for example, turn a conveyor on with one sensor and then turn it off with a different sensor. Okay, down here we've got math functions and relation no and equality, so less than, equal to, not equal to. And we've got timers. Timer off and a timer on. Let's see, utilities. I don't think we need to worry about that. And settings. This is where you can set your opacity for how how much you can see through it. Maybe you want totally black so you can see nothing through it or quite opaque so you can see your factory I.O. through it. All right, so different, different controls that we might use. Okay, let's go back to our factory I.O. scene. And I want to make some of these things work together. So maybe I'll use my, now as you can see, I can see my scene really well, but I can barely see my control aisle. So I'm going to change that opacity up a little bit. Oh, that's a little better. Okay, I'm, I want to use this start button start one to turn on system ready so I'll go find my my tags and find my start button uh, there we are start button one and I want that to turn on this system ready light if I can find it there it is system ready and all I need to do is connect those guys together. Now, if I push my start button, my system ready goes on. When I let it go, it goes off. If I want to latch something on, I'm going to use that set reset. So I'll use my start button to latch it. My output is going to, I'll go to that same light. I'll put to that light and then I'll use this stop button to reset it. So I'll find my stop and hook that to the reset. And now when I push my start button, Oh, I made one mistake. This stop button is always hot. So I need to go back here. See, I'm getting the hot signal without pushing it. And I don't want that, so I'm going to use my not. I'll run that through the not. Now you can see I'm not getting a hot signal from this stop button. Now when I push my green light or my green button, that light goes on and I use the red button to turn it off. <laughs> 